Okay. We talked about the 911 call and, and your interpretation of that 911 call, okay? Mm. I want to play it. You can hit play on this, okay? If you've heard the whole thing or what, <sighs> just hit play whenever you're ready. Tell me who raped Corey Haim. is going to be a hard hitter and you guys already know that if I mention that phrase or that word um you guys already know this is going to be a sensitive topic for some of you guys you guys that have been uh, long time subscribers or followers or supporters uh, of my channel or anything of my social media of sorts that if I use that phrase, then that means that trigger warning, basically. I've been doing, you know, YouTube on and off for years, so that is why I typically use that term so that uh, people can get a sense of my terminology and, you know, of that sorts. So, with that being said, we have to talk about. Corey Feldman, okay, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to say anything, I wasn't sure if there was, you know, anything to be said, uh, simply because his uh, presence, his complaining, his bitching, um, I, I don't know. It's, it's I don't know. It's starting to like getting annoying at this point for me. It's getting to the point where it's like, okay, where do you stand, and why is everything looking suspicious all of a sudden uh, in his case? Because uh, if you guys weren't aware, he made um, you know that documentary that you saw in the beginning, and. Uh, it was a tough one to watch, not gonna lie. Um, came out in March of last year, and it was actually March 9th is when it was released in, I believe it was LA, and they had like a private screening for celebrities and uh, other people that supported him to expose, uh, I want to say like five to six uh, big time, big deal people in Hollywood that were, uh, considered pedophiles in his eyes. And the reason I say his eyes is because, um, we can't fully state that these people did anything simply because of the statute of limitations because happened when uh, Corey was obviously um, a child and he grew up in the 80s uh, being a well known uh, child star and he was you know he grew up with uh, River Phoenix um, he grew up with Corey Haim and if you guys have ever seen, you know, The Lost Boys, if you guys have ever seen uh, The Goonies, there's, you know, just a lot of blockbusters that he was in. And no one really knew behind the scenes what was going on until he basically revealed it later in life. He 
played the victim role to the T compared to all the roles that he did uh, prior. And, you know, you have uh, Will Wheaton, and he's spoken out about uh, the sexual abuse, and um, particularly for River Phoenix, not for uh, Corey Feldman, but particularly for River Phoenix, who uh, overdosed uh, on drugs, and I believe it was heroin, uh, to be more specific, and he was young, you know, he was uh, early 20s, and Will Wheaton felt like he was, um, he couldn't say anything, or he was silenced, or he just felt helpless, and he felt like it wasn't fair to River Phoenix, like he had a lot of things going for him, but he also, in a sense, broke the oath, um, and I think obviously he was just tired of everything. He was tired of the game. He was tired of uh, what Hollywood actually represented. And I think that's more so along the lines of why he overdosed. Um, and obviously when you are addicted to drugs, particularly uh, anything that will cause a fatal problem in the long run, it doesn't just have to be heroin. Um, you can't predict when that's going to be your last time using, when that's going to be your last time getting your fix. You know what I'm saying? You can't, there's something you can't predict. That's not up to us, obviously. Um, some of us are lucky enough to have been overdosed along a lot of times in our lives and are still here talking to you guys right now at this very moment. So, um, I feel like the uh, any kind of documentary that has a lot of sexual explicit uh, content when it comes to children, um, even if it's, you know, um, even if it is narrated, narrated in the way that uh, doesn't actually give the full detail, it doesn't actually give the full graphic detail. I mean, if you compare his documentary to, like, Finding Neverland with Michael Jackson's uh, accusers, and if you compare it to, like, any other docuseries that you've seen, whether it's on Netflix, whether it's um, Amazon Prime had, like, a whole thing about, you know, pedophilia. Amazon Prime had, like, a lot of different things on sexual uh, deviancies and sex trafficking around the world, not just here in the United States. Um, and Netflix did a, uh, spotlight, you know, the, the movie that it got a lot of scrutiny for, uh, cuties. And if you think, if you really think about, um, all of that, you're going to have two, two things happening. The first thing is going to be you're going to trigger those individuals that have gone through any type of sexual trauma. It doesn't matter if it was a one-time deal. It doesn't matter if it was long-term uh, abuse in that aspect. And what that uh, evidently does is it triggers the individual. Uh, while the individual does not realize their trigger, um, it can cause them to spiral. It can cause them to lash out depression, anxiety, so on and so forth. So that's one agenda. And then the second thing you're going to get is um, the enticement of pedophiles and predators. And obviously they're going to enjoy listening to the more graphic, the more uh, openly sexually explicit towards minors. And then you're going to have the in-between, which is, you know, the individuals that have never dealt with this type of trauma or uh, individuals that have um, known somebody with this type of trauma. And it can go either way um, as far as reactions. So those are the three typical things that you're going to encounter when it comes to these types of docuseries. Um, I did appreciate 
when I watched this back in March of last year, I did appreciate that he wasn't um, sexually explicit compared to all the other ones that I've seen that, you know, kind of hard to watch because it made a lot of sense, uh, so to speak, as to trying to understand what I went through and starting that process with forgiving and um, letting go of everything that my father and the rest of my family had done. So I, I did, I did appreciate his, uh, he was more focused on exposing these people rather than talking explicitly. And I think the real reason he did that was to not trigger himself and to not entice these predators that were going to try to watch this. Um, and then there was like a whole thing where when he did premiere it, um, the, those of us that paid the $20, uh, yeah, those of us that paid the $20, uh, were not able to actually watch it firsthand. Uh, they, he had gotten hacked and somebody had duplicated the, uh, the screening. So they, they literally ripped a copy of it right then and there and were selling tickets and made a whole other different website. Now, at first I didn't buy it. I didn't buy uh, what the media was pushing because I knew it was more the media than anything. And then I myself misspelled, not on purpose, on accident, because, you know, being blind, shit happens. But um, I misspelled my truth. So instead of saying mytruth.com, it was, I put the S. And apparently Corey did the same thing. Um, we find out later in, you know, the podcast that he did, we'll talk about briefly. Um, but I actually made that mistake and I realized that something was wrong because when I went in there and said, oh, you need your $20. I'm like, well, I already, I'm thinking in my head, I'm already, I've already paid, so something's up. There's, I'm like, there's no way he would scam twice. There's no fucking way. And sure enough, it was a scam artist, obviously. They either didn't want him to release this or they wanted to change it so that uh, those of us that weren't able to see it right away um, uh, would get a different version so that they couldn't actually expose all of these uh, big time famous uh, producers. Um, writers and and uh, basically everybody that that was hugely successful and hugely known back in the 80s early 90s so on and so forth so um i think that a lot of people uh just uh, th those of us that couldn't see it a lot of people lost it so then there was a lot of uh you know when i had twitter back then uh there was a lot of accusations being thrown um so many different like a lot of a-list celebrities and i knew that he couldn't actually pinpoint um i knew that he, that wasn't his goal his goal wasn't to scrutinize actual fellow actors i think his goal was more towards the producers that uh, are alone with these kids to this day um even though they try to change the laws over and over, at the same time, that's that was his his goal, uh, more so than uh, actual actors. And then um, his uh, his, I mean, he he almost gave up. Like he he wasn't going to release it. And then a fellow actress, I, again, I don't remember her name. But um, she said, you need to do this now because if we don't do this now, when are we going to get the chance to see this? Or when, you, when are you going to get another chance to do this? You've already spent millions of dollars. Just fucking do this. So then he's like, well, yeah, she's right. So then he, you know, released it. And then uh, luckily he had another copy. He, he was smart enough to make another copy. And then he did it again. Um, he released it for us. And he did like, he did like a three day thing. So we got sent an email. Those of us that, that paid the $20 got sent an email saying, you know, we're going to, we're going to air it three different times and you have to select the time that you're, you're 
going to air it. Like, we're, we're doing three different times because we know you guys are busy. We know you guys have lives. So we just want to be able to make sure that all of you guys that pay, that pay the $20 get your money's worth. So I was kind of glad that he, again, did that because those, those that bought the $20 were trying to spin the narrative that, uh, he was scamming and, and all of this was a lie and, and it was really more so the media because that's, you know, the power of suggestion. Um, people are going to run with that because a lot of people are sheep. A lot of people um, do what they're told rather than think for themselves or, or uh, take account of their own lives and, and take action for their own lives, so on and so forth. And we see that to this day. And um, the... The interesting thing, too, is that um, uh, he did get, uh, I think it was like the while the making of this movie, because he was pretty open about it, and people were mad at him because they he wouldn't release names, but he was just like, I'd rather do it uh, on my own and, and put the money's worth to do my own documentary rather than having to be silenced by, you know, TV networks, TV executives, so on and so forth. So clearly they were afraid of this documentary being aired. And he went to the um, LAPD and, and they're trying to cover up who tried to stab him because he was, uh, he was stabbed. And um, he has the, the, the torn area of where he was stabbed a couple of times on the jacket that he was wearing. So, uh, clearly they tried to take him out and it didn't work. And he even says on the, uh, Steve-O podcast that, um, they're like, well, how did you survive that? And he's like, he's like, I can't explain it. And he's like, I'm thinking it's God. I, I just, I can't explain it. And, um, the only thing that I didn't like about Steve-O giving the interview um, and I get that it's a podcast. I get that, that, I mean, he, he's trying to make a name for himself. He's trying to be buddy, buddy with all of these celebrities just to, just to get views, clicks on YouTube, obviously. And, um, the sad part is for me is that I, I have a feeling that him and his crew either know some people that are part of the pedophile ring or part of the uh, predatorial aspect um, as far as celebrities go because a lot of what they spoke about didn't make sense and it didn't add up on top of Steve-O giggling about it and smiling about it every single time they mentioned, you know, pedophilia or pedophile and he was like smile and, and grin and, and get a little too excited for my taste. And then when they would ask him, you know, who, who do you think uh, tried to silence you or who do you think tried to kill you or he, this, you know, the basic questions that everybody wants to know. And he's like, um, obviously pedophiles in Hollywood and um, his crew was just like, uh, I don't know if they were like taken aback by it or they just didn't believe it. They were like, no, I don't think that's it. But I think. Again, it's it's it looks suspicious if you think about it. Every time he mentioned that word, they would either smile and laugh and giggle like like little children. These are grown ass men, or they would just get like a really serious face and just like no, that's not true. Or no, that's not. like it's just it's pretty obvious what's going on with that narrative. And then how do we go from him talking about being invited to the Playboy Mansion and clearly those women were underaged. I know that a lot of people don't like the Playboy Bunnies, especially women that are feminist. I get that you guys don't like the Playboy Bunnies and I get that you like that they're, not, they're, they're playing victim, right? I get that. But at the same time, they were underaged. And a lot of, and, and that kills me too, that women will believe certain women when it comes to uh, pedophilia or sex trafficking or so on and so forth. That's basically what Hugh Hefner was. He was basically a, a 
a glamorized pimp <laughs> for all these girlfriends he had that were underage. And um, a lot of the, the play, ex-Playboy bunnies talked about this, uh, basically being uh, drugged and passed around. And, and uh, they said that it was no different than, you know, the, being in the porn industry where they're basically exploited as well. Um, and then you have a lot of ignorant people that, whether men or women, that say that, um, you know, uh, porn stars aren't, they're not all sex trafficked, but they still are exploited. They have to be on drugs and, you know, those that don't black out uh, naturally from being traumatized prior uh, to getting into the industry, but a lot of them have to take drugs and drink alcohol to numb the pain and, and numb the trauma that they have to they have to relive when they have sex, basically, um, because it's not a it's not a good industry. It's not a nice industry for women. Um, they are 130 times more likely to be killed and uh, to be raped and, and to be brutalized and so on and so forth and to men and women a lot of it is a lot of the ignorance is oh well they want it or they enjoy being raped or they enjoy um so on and so forth but if you're a child and you have no say and if you're a child and you don't know any better um what are you supposed to do because that's basically where Corey was coming from was that uh, basically, a, a predator and pedophile told him, you know, you, you need to do drugs. And his way of, of getting him to get to do cocaine and, and reach to the point of heroin so that basically he could sleep with him at a very young age. And a lot of it is you don't realize it until you're getting addicted to the drug that you need the drug to survive. You need the drug to endure that pain and in Corey's eyes he had no way out in Corey's eyes he couldn't like like who could he talk to if nobody was listening and his own parents uh basically sold him off to these pedophiles you know what I'm saying so when you're a child you just you don't understand you, you truly truly don't um and the really, the, really, the other main point of him doing the documentary was for his friend, uh, Corey Hume. And um, basically his guilt, his regrets for not being there for him and not doing all that he could to help him, so to speak. And um, again, a lot of it is, seems a little fishy on the... Steve's podcast because we went we go from talking about the mansion to talking about him bitching and whining and moaning about all of the revenue he lost um, to the individuals that stole the copy and then um, him bitching and moaning that he's being silenced now that he's got a, his music career going. Um, and I don't know why he's surprised. I don't know why he's acting dumb. I don't know why he's really truly surprised. Because if you were supposedly someone who was going to be killed, basically killed off for being open and honest about these individuals, why are you surprised? Like, why, why are you acting like nothing ever happened? to that nature because you're bitching that the media is against you when they've always been against you because you've been preaching about doing this documentary for years and you finally had the guts to do it. You did it. It happened. You got your money. Um, and now he's still bitching. <laughs> like now he's still like, he just won't let this shit go. Um, and I think it uh, ultimately it has to do with his guilt towards not being able to forgive himself and then uh, not being able to be there and forgive himself for Corey. 
Um, and for those of you who don't understand, when it comes to guilt and forgiving yourself, uh, when it comes to trauma, you have to own your story. And a lot of people have a hard time with that. And when it comes to forgiving yourself, it's not about, I know a lot of people take it wrong, especially for those of you who never dealt with trauma or never dealt with sexual abuse or sexual assault. It's not about forgiving yourself in a sense that it was your fault or you're blaming yourself in every in every which way you were the child and the adult was supposed to be an adult but at the same time you waste so much of your life being angry you may you waste so much of your years being self-destructive you waste so much time and you can't get that back had I forgiven, this is how I felt before I started the healing process full forcely um, back in 2018. Um, this, this was my thought process was that I basically just wasted a lot of years, you know, from the time I was a teenager, uh, that or early adolescent actually. So from like 11 years old until I want to say like 20, is when I really started like actually devoting myself to recovery and helping others in the process. But for me, it was like, I have to get my shit together first before I can tell anybody, you know, you have to do A, B, and C to recover, or you have to do A, B, and C to get better. Um, because I never believed in misleading and, and, and bullshitting people. So for me, um, it was just easier to do it that way. So when it came to forgiving myself, it was more so wasting time that I could have utilized for something else. And then forgiving myself for not being able to forgive him when I should have and forgiving myself for just letting go of any any type of emotion that I had towards that and that was when the healing process started and me letting go of everything and you know me writing a letter basically to everybody that was a part of and um a lot of people don't understand that aspect. They think it's more so about the other person, but it's really about you. When you, you forgive yourself or you forgive someone, it's about you. It's not about the other person, but other people just hop on a bag wagon and don't really fully do uh, self-reflection. Nobody believes, a lot of people believe in therapy, let alone uh, healing themselves. Because a lot of people won't admit that they deal with trauma. It doesn't matter how severe, how minuscule it may feel to you. I don't believe in comparing traumas. And I, I just, I don't believe in that. Because everyone is validated. Everybody is has a purpose for a reason. And everybody is human. You know. So I will uh, let you guys go with that. Um, that's pretty much, you know my two cents on this whole thing because I actually watched and I actually, you know, put $20 in <laughs> to watch this documentary last year. And, um, I just don't understand his bitchiness. I don't understand his, uh, his, you know, his whole, uh, agenda here. And it's looking kind of suspicious if you ask me, but that's just me. So I will let you guys go and I will see you guys soon. All right. Love you guys. Bye.